<laughs> okay. So welcome, welcome everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome to to our Horizon Weekly Insider number two, uh, thirty-two. Um, today is uh, March 19, if I'm not mistaken. So happy Thursday to you all. Uh, please remember that this call is being recorded and is going to be available in our YouTube channel as well as in our podcast for you to check out later. Also, please remember to ask your questions so we can get uh, so we can have our good um, mentee session at the end. Let's uh, start with the updates from the engineering department. I'll pass the word to Luca. If you are available, Luca, please go ahead. Hi. Here I am. Thank you, Angie. So hello, everybody. Today we have uh, great news to share with you, and uh, Alberto will be speaking about it. So um, hopefully all the people that wanted to join today have already joined. I'm looking at the, uh, at the list here. Otherwise, of course, please remember that you can always uh, listen again to this weekly insider episode on our channels like YouTube, uh, Spotify, and so on. Just buying some more time here because I see a few people are still joining. And I like to think that maybe some of you are listening to this episode in the future. So maybe after see, having seen what we published on our GitHub, you will come here on, on YouTube and re-listen to this podcast again. But now without further ado, I'm passing it to Alberto. Thanks, Luca. Okay. Uh, okay. The main topic for today is um, the fact that we are about to publish the development we did in the last six months regarding ZK Snarks. And in particular, we are going to publish uh, three libraries. Okay. Let's start with the, with the main one that is called Ginger. Uh, Ginger is a fork of Zexe. Uh, with the goal of creating um, a general purpose library that can be used as a tool set to enable developers implementing circuits, also using full recursion. Uh, while we were um, developing Ginger, we were mainly focused on keeping it very generic so that it can be used um, um, for a wide set of use cases, introducing different cryptographic primitives and gadgets that can be used by the developers based on their needs. And just to mention, um, some of the elements that are part of the library are uh, the addition of MT4 and MT6 uh, cures uh, uh, with the 753 bits and with the full cycle. And with all the needed um, fields, primitives, and gadgets that are needed to be able to implement uh, uh, recursive snarks. And as you as you remember, uh, we are using recursive snark in our lattice uh, sidechain design. And, and uh, regarding the primitives, uh, we included uh, a full implementation of uh, Poseidon hash and uh, a Schnorr signature using Poseidon and uh, a VRF implementation that is uh, based on it, and also a Merkle tree version that is based on Poseidon too. And all this stuff is part of the uh, Ginger library. And for all these primitives, uh, we had also implemented the corresponding gadgets. For example, um, and, and I'm sorry, and <laughs> gadget is just to uh, just uh, I spend a couple of words uh, about uh, the gadget thing. Uh, the gadget is uh, uh, the tool that is used in the circuit for verifying, let me say, something. So, for example, verifying uh, a valid hash or a valid signature, and so. With uh, regarding all the primitives I mentioned before, we also implemented the corresponding gadgets. And let's say, for example, uh, uh, the library includes a proof verifier for MNT4 and MT6 uh, built proof. I mean, or proof built on the on that uh, elliptic curve. Um, a Merkel proof verifier gadget, a VRF uh, output verifier gadget. And many others, and I, I, I mentioned the VRF because um, having uh, implemented Ouroboros in our sidechain um, consensus, uh, we need to verify also uh, the VRF output that is used to prove your eligibility uh, to be a forger. So for this reason, um, we created a general purpose. Um, primitive uh, that is uh, able to generate the VRF output. 
but also the gadget that is responsible to verify, uh, let me say, <laughs> the correct output and, and the ranking that is assigned to the forger to demonstrate that he's able to, um, to issue the block. But this could, could be used for many other use cases. So, um, and again, uh, the purpose of the library is to be a tool set. So uh, we are using it for also for in, in, uh, in our Lados session and our SDK uh, and as the primitives in our core. But um, the main goal is to be a library that anyone can use uh, in also in uh, scenarios that are related to Lados and, 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 uh, and Zendu and so on. But uh, let's go on with the last uh, things to say about uh, uh, Ginger. Uh, we put also a lot of effort um, on uh, implementing uh, several unit tests to improve uh, the implementation quality. Of course, uh, uh, development will continue, uh, will continue also in the future, but it will continue uh, publicly. And obviously, we will be glad uh, to have any contribution uh, from the community. And this, for us, is very important. Okay, um, this was uh, about Ginger. But uh, at the beginning, uh, we said that Ginger was the main one, but uh, we're going to publish also two other important libraries. In particular, we're going to publish a library that is called uh, uh, Zendu Saich and Cryptolib. That is used uh, on Ginger and will be used by Zendu Session SDK. For example, it will be used to compute uh, uh, Poseidon hashes, fast Merkle trees processing, and beta circuit proof generation. Okay, and uh, speaking about main chain, the third library is called Zendu Main Chain CryptoLib, and similarly to Zendu Session CryptoLib, is responsible of making available to main chain core the cryptographic uh, primitives. Okay, and uh, for all these libraries, we plan to go public within the end of the month as a first step in beta release buff. And um, that's all for my side. Thanks, Luca. Uh, Alberto, if I could just do a huge congratulations here to you and, and the engineering team for making this possible. I don't think that the, the, uh, the magnitude or enormity of this contribution can be understated. Um, so not only in and really adverse conditions did you guys deliver three cryptographic libraries and very sophisticated libraries that i'm super excited to make public but one of these libraries i think you know has a reasonable expectation of becoming an industry standard just because of the way it was streamlined and the tools that it really does contribute to the the broader zero knowledge community and just the broader blockchain community so this is not only a major advancement for our project but an enormous contribution for the entire ecosystem. So thank you guys so much for, for doing this. Thank you, Alberto and uh, Rob, for your immediate comment on it. Um, really amazing content is coming, so looking forward to see it published. And uh, once it will, please uh, contribute it uh, to it, uh, as Alberto was just saying. Um, of course, you will also find the documentation, so uh, answering on the fly to um, uh, to some of the users that was asking, where can I see more, where can I find more info about it? And uh, within the oh, yes, Luca, oh, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. One thing that I haven't mentioned is that also we included another uh, important part in, uh, in all this project. I mean, um, we are... We are also including, we also wrote the technical documents that are explaining the design choices and the security implications for some of the gadgets and circuits that are included in this release. And this is, a, um, I think, is, is also another important part. So you will be able to uh, understand the reason for the design of some of these components and uh, uh, this, the security implications and how we analyze them. And, uh, uh, and this is explained also from an academical standpoint, let me say. Uh, so this is another important part of the, uh, that, well, let me say, we provide uh, with, the, um, with the libraries that I just mentioned. Yeah. And if I may add a fun fact, you will also find in the documentation the history of the name Ginger. So the reasons on why it was chosen. Right, Alberto, they will have some fun reading it. <laughs> yes, this is a funny story. <laughs> 
and uh, of course all the other activities are ongoing so for instance all the code review sessions for the rest of beta are ongoing uh, some change requests were requested but uh, today we really wanted to highlight ginger so that's it for now and see you later for your questions thank uh, back to you angie thank you luca and alberto let's continue with spencer for the help text desk updates hello everyone uh, if you scroll back in the text uh, channel, you will see the report from the service desk, uh, again, uh, dominated by 85% uh, of all tickets that came in in the last week were related to the faucet. Uh, and you'll see beneath that uh, a breakdown for the issues for the remainder of the uh, non-faucet issues. Uh, as far as actual numbers go, sort of a typical week, 63 tickets resolved. In the last days, we have a total of 111 tickets open, 39 of which are waiting for customers, uh, excuse me, for support. 72 are items that are waiting for customers to respond. And uh, the majority of the items in the escalator pending are related to one particular issue, which uh, we hope to resolve very quickly. And on customer satisfaction, we're up to 4.6 out of a possible 5 on 17 user reviews. That's report from uh, the service desk. Thank you, Spencer. Let's continue with Gustavo for the UX updates. Hey, everyone. Happy Firstly, So first and foremost, congratulations to Alberto and the team for this major breakthrough. So on our side, on the UX team, we've basically been working on the transition from the faucet to a community hub. And uh, that's as much as I can unveil right now. Maybe we'll have Jonathan to say some words about the future changes. And that's all for now. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Gustavo. Now let's have Rowan for the BD updates. Hello, everyone. No huge update for me on the integration front for today. Uh, however, we have been working on a little something for our users in the US. And we will be able to talk about that in a bit more detail in the next short while. Uh, my main missions at the moment are kind of back office stuff. Uh, we're in the process of changing bank accounts, which sounds like a really easy job, but it's actually uh, quite a large scope. Uh, we need to make sure we do it in a, a swift and secure manner. And we need to get input from a variety of different people within the organization to make that happen prevent any kind of downtime of critical services and things like that. So that's one of the uh, current ongoing back office missions. Also working to overhaul our HR systems, um, making sure that we're looking after team members properly, providing right training, the right tools, action and feedback, all that sort of good stuff, just to make sure that we are uh, operating the best we possibly can. And uh, clearly in a, a kind of time of quite a lot of choppiness and, and market volatility. It's very important for us to be uh, revisiting our budget frequently to make sure that it is still viable and to make sure that we can sustain ourselves uh, during this period of volatility. Uh, one thing I did want to mention, I quite often say we, uh, and obviously this is the royal we. Uh, the entire organization takes part in a lot of the tasks that I'm doing. Uh, but there are two people that have been helping out uh, a lot in the past little while, kind of unsung heroes, if you like, people that you don't usually hear from through these podcasts. So I just wanted to provide a bit of a shout out, uh, first of all, to Michelle, who is helping with accounting and finance. I say helping, Michelle is accounting and finance, effectively. It's more like I'm helping her. Um, so a huge shout, uh, shout out to Michelle, done some amazing work recently, uh, been a massive, massive asset to the organization. And also to Leslie, who is jumping in and helping us with the overhauling of HR systems. Again, a huge asset and certainly couldn't be doing it without her. So huge thank you to both of them, Unsung Heroes of Horizon. And that's it for me. If anyone else wants to jump in, please feel free to do so. Hello, everyone. Juan speaking. Uh, so tomorrow I'm having an interview with uh, Jeff Kirdikis of the new social platform called Uptrend. And other than that, uh, there is lots of activity in the background with our potential partners, but unfortunately, not all info is public and I'll keep my mouth shut for the time. And also huge congratulations to our engineering team for the new upcoming release. Back to you, Angie. 
Thank you, guys. Uh, just a quick one from the Latin American market. So yesterday I had a call with uh, Arle from XPay, one of our payment providers uh, for Latin America. So I'll just pass the link here so you can check that out. And we will be continuing having a lot of uh, social media content for the Latin American region. Uh, maybe Aldo can also help me on that. So we'll keep you posted. Um, let's continue with uh, Jonas for the HDE and Academy updates. Hey everyone, so um, my task over the past couple of days was uh, working on expert content as usual. Um, I just uh, We just released the third chapter of the expert content uh, about wallets, um, I think two days ago. So check that out if you haven't done so already. Uh, currently I'm working on chapter four. Um, actually, I am deep diving into the Zendu protocol right now because um, I'm writing an article there on cross-chain transfers. So in order for that, um, yeah, I took a deep look into the Zen, uh, Zendu white paper. And um, from my side, congratulations, guys. Really good stuff. Uh, like what I see there. Um, other than that, that would be it from my side. Um, have a good rest of the week and talk soon. Thank you, Jonas. Now let's continue with Lucy for the marketing updates. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, congratulations uh, to the uh, engineering team for the uh, amazing um, breakthrough. Uh, so uh, from the marketing side, we released our response to the COVID-19 situation on Monday. Uh, so the messages are from Rob on behalf of the team. Uh, we wanted to let everyone know that the uh, Horizon team remains fully committed to the well-being of this uh, project, uh, our team members, and continue to deliver uh, and provide services to our users, uh, regard regardless of the uh, uh, of external uh, tough situation. Uh, so this message is published on our blog. Uh, this was also sent out to uh, uh, to our newsletter subscribers. So effective immediately, we postponed all in-person events through the end of April. Uh, we will be focusing on community engagement digitally and then move events focus online. Uh, and then also we're working on producing even more useful and interesting content for our community. Um, for instance, next quarterly live stream is still on schedule and will be held live on YouTube on the 1st of April. Uh, our response to the... Um, uh, COVID-19 explains more, uh, you know, regarding the, all, the, all the adjustments that we have made in order to, uh, uh, to com combat this outbreak and then uh, what our community can still expect from us despite the current challenges. So uh, please uh, read the uh, entire message on our blog if you haven't done so. And one thing everyone really should do now is not to panic, right? <laughs> and stay zen. So some zen in our life always help, always helps, um, and it's particularly important uh, during during a, uh, a chaotic time. So we ask our community to share the ways how they get zen. So whether it's a uh, a, uh, a meditation practice then or our favorite cryptocurrency then right so we would like you to to share your secret of, 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 how, of how you're getting it uh, so to make it even more fun we will give some zen to 10 participants so each of them will receive one zen uh, so share your secrets of how to get zen for a chance to win some zen <laughs> right so i i wanted to thank our hr queen leslie for the great idea uh, and everyone, you can you can find details about this fun game on our social social media feed. And then also, we have a winner now for our fan art competition. So we received a total of uh, uh, two hundred forty six votes. Uh, and then the winner is a beautiful uh, uh, a beautiful original art made by uh, one of our community members. And the artwork is now available for purchase on our official store. Uh, and then other than that, we are uh, providing support for the growth team uh, to do the uh, improvement on the fast end and transition to the community uh, to a, a community uh, hub. And that's it from me. Everyone stay safe. Pass it to you, Jonathan. Hey, everybody. Thanks for that, Lucy. Uh, okay, cool. So I might end a couple of reminders. To everyone listening, remember, if you're going to use the faucet, uh, use Brave Browser and use uh, the link on getzen.cash to download it. 
uh, if you use Brave, you automatically get a bonus, about 20%. So, I mean, that's awesome. Why, why wouldn't you do that? Um, also, we have our March giveaway up and running. It just started about two days ago. So if you go to getzen.cash, you'll see it. It's uh, the second uh, placeholder, the second card. Uh, so go ahead, enter the giveaway. So far, we've had, I think, about six winners over January and February, and we've given out uh, about $300. So uh, yeah, go ahead and take a look. We're going to have three winners this month. Um, then in terms of what Gustavo was saying, we have a very interesting upgrade to the faucet, which should be launching next week. Basically, if uh, if you're able to sign a signature using a wallet such as Sphere by Horizon or really any wallet where you own your private keys and lets you sign a signature, uh, sign a message, uh, you can actually get 50% more rewards. So the reason we're doing this is one, because we have an awesome app called Sphere by Horizon, uh, which everybody should be using. Um, it A lot of work went into it. It's beautiful. It works great. So we're trying to encourage downloads of that. And two, uh, we are sending so many transactions that we are trying to prevent any kind of conflict with partners where uh, who, who are getting tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of little microtransactions. So uh, this works well for everybody. But most importantly, we want the world to see how awesome our products are, and we're willing uh, to increase rewards to do that. So that should be up and running next week. Then the following week, we have another really great uh, addition to the faucet. Uh, basically, we're calling it HODL rewards. So if you take the, the rewards you get from the faucet and you keep them in a wallet, your rewards for the faucet will actually go up. So uh, I promise you that we're going to keep increasing the rewards on this faucet, and we're continuing to do that even through this tough and troubled and chaotic times. So very excited. A lot of cool features coming. And thank you to Gustavo, Tuan, Lucy, the design team. All of these changes we're making are just being released like flawlessly. It's, it's truly amazing. And that's because this team functions so well together. And uh, just really grateful for that. And that's it for me. Thanks, guys. Hey, Jonathan, that was so eloquently stated. Thank you so much for that. Uh, just to piggyback on the, you know, one of the, the other big points of um, using incentives to encourage people to actually take control of their own private keys is this is how we, we practice safe crypto, guys. In, in the faucet, the point of the faucet was always to be a first point of entry for people to un get to learn about crypto, get to learn about Zen, download a wallet, you know, use the wallet, un understand what the functions and features are. Um, so it is a bit self-defeating if people are just sending a, a swarm of microtransactions on exchange. What we want to do is encourage people to actually use our products and to practice safe crypto. So I think this is just a really cool way of aligning incentives with actually good uh, cryptocurrency behavior. Awesome. Um, now we are going to pass uh, to Rosario for product and engineering. Congratulations to the engineering team. It's uh, great to see that we are continuing to make deliveries during during the, these trying times. And also uh, for the HODL bonus, that was uh, such a great idea. I think a Chronic was the one that uh, pushed us to to change the name, so that was uh, brilliant. I think. And as as you all heard from Alberto, we continue making significant progress towards beta, and uh, something that. Um, was not mentioned, but I'll mention here is that uh, Paolo continues making progress with Sphere. We've had some unplanned work with price API issue and a new feature for growth to provide the ability to sign and verify in Sphere, and of course the respective changes on the Zen Cache JS library. And with those unplanned activities, Paolo continues making significant progress towards expanding Sphere for sidechain management. And he's uh, right now focused on the forward transfer uh, from main chain to a specific ch side chain. So a lot is uh, going on from it, uh, different fronts from part of the team. We also continue serving our products in hopes to retire some and have a more focused uh, strategy in terms of uh, maintaining products. 
So we've identified a first set of uh, products and identified the, the internal and external dependencies for, for each, and all these are going to be uh, compiled to provide a recommendation to our product strategy. And, and that is it for now. Happy Thursday, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Rosario. And now we have uh, Rob for the final part. Thank you, Angie. Thank you for everyone for your updates today. I have to say it's amazing to see how upbeat everyone is today uh, when it seems like um, there's a lot of stress going on around the world these days. Markets have been absolutely crazy with volatility up and down and so forth. Um, so there's there's certainly a lot of stress out there. The Probably the biggest message here, guys, is you know make sure you're taking care of yourselves, your families, contributing to your communities. And obviously, we have a very important and very special community here at Horizon. Uh, so we're doing everything that we can to you know, try to protect this community and continue to foster it, help each other out. You guys have to do your part. So if you're listening to this, again, I always say this, if you're listening to this, you're one of the, you know, the small percentage of people that contribute the most to this ecosystem, even just by paying attention to what's going on and staying in touch with things. You are, you are very important to the ecosystem. So make sure if you can step up to the extent that you can help each other out and together we can really get through anything. Um, so as Rosario pointed out to me before, um, big companies these days are struggling with remote work. Uh, we take it for granted because this is the way that we just operate normally. So like she said, we are awesome. And I have to completely agree with that. Um, and before I get into the kind of the administrative stuff and then some, you know, commenting on the good news that you've heard here today, Lucy, just want to tell you my how to get Zen secret is to walk on the beach with Zen baby. So I posted that on Twitter. I think that I'm, I should be in the running as a top candidate for winning the how to get Zen prize, whatever that prize ends up being. Okay. So, um, Lucy mentioned it. We, we posted a response to COVID-19. And guys, this is not us commenting or opining or guesstimating um, anything about health, anything about epidemics, anything about um, you know economic responses to these to these things, and, and not trying to make projections at all. What it was was showing you exactly what we're doing internally as an organization to make sure that we are responding in an appropriate way, so an aggressive way, a conservative way, but also looking for opportunities to make this our opportunity to shine as, as an ecosystem. So you'll see the, the specifics in there. So just administrative stuff. Uh, okay, we've, we've canceled or we're postponing all in-person events it, at minimum through the end of April. So we are following very closely global events and we wanna make sure that the first thing that we're doing is we're being responsible to our community and we're not encouraging anything that ex post might be seen as irresponsible where we're putting our community members or our team at risk. So we want to make sure that we're proactive with that. All employees now are working remotely from home until uh, we said, we said in the article, you know, for the remainder of March, but very likely it's going to be uh, longer than that. And guys, I have to say like one, one thing is we all have to, you know, if you send your, your virtual good thoughts and, and well wishes to our, our comrades in Italy right now, because Italy is, has been hit extremely hard, relatively speaking, with um, the coronavirus. So everyone there on, on our team has been responding amazingly, super professionally, and just, you know, honestly, the, the hard and effort that they're putting into this project is, you know, outstanding and completely beyond any expectation of what would be reasonable for what you would consider an employee. And I think shows that people are not just employees in this ecosystem, and what they're doing matters, and they take it as, as a, more of a calling than a job. So it, it's really fantastic. But please, guys, uh, anything you can to support our Italian brethren who are out there in, at the focal point for this, um, please do. Um, so that's where our office is. We've, um, you know, officially, uh, we, we tried to respond early where we gave people the option to work from home, and now it's mandatory. So office is closed, but people are, you can see just from what you've heard here today, still being super productive as a team, um, despite personal hardship. And that's something that we should not take for granted. Um, continuing to have the administrative stuff. So uh, just as a conservative response to what's going on. So we know that the breadth of this um, you know, pandemic is wide. Uh, we don't know the depth of how, how long or how deep things will go for. So we have to be conservative 
as an org and aggressive um, and opportunistic where it matters. But in terms of the conservatism, we're freezing new hires, at least through the end of the month, probably longer. And again, this is on the foundation side. Um, we are, like Rowan said, reevaluating our 2020 budget plan, uh, rolling out, obviously, immediately cost controls. And what this means is we have discretionary spending that we do all the time. So we have core spending for things that map directly to our roadmap. And then we have discretionary spending over and above that for things that we think contribute significantly to the ecosystem, but we can scale down on quickly in adverse times. And these are adverse times, at least uh, with respect to the market. So we're, we're implementing cost controls, decreasing discretionary spending, uh, and we are exploring new revenue opportunities um, that we have already been building. And probably the, the clearest case here, and Jonathan mentioned it, encouraging everyone to use the Brave browser. This is one example of monetizing significant traffic flows through one of our marketing assets. Um, so we, we have a lot of people that use the faucet, which is evolving into a community hub. And it, it does not make sense at all not to monetize the traffic for the ecosystem. The plan was to roll 100% of proceeds back into growth. So basically community supporting community. So community revenue is going back to growing that community. Um, and this is for us though, a very nice exogenous revenue stream into the ecosystem that does not depend on the price of Zen. So again, we encourage everyone who's using the faucet, everyone in the community, uh, you can see we're partnering with organizations like Brave, the browser that is a sympathetic privacy oriented blockchain ecosystem itself and trying to support that. So we're being very intentional with the organizations that we are willing to uh, work with in order to monetize traffic. But it's, it's really a win-win and it's great during times like this to have revenues coming in from outside of just the Zen marketplace. Okay. And we, we are, of course, just a, as a matter of how we do business, significantly increasing the content and the conversation, just the amount of communication with our community, with key stakeholders, partners. We want you all to be super informed, much more so than ever. And we want you to participate and, you know, let, let, let's not even say the survival of this ecosystem because we're going to survive no matter what. We know that. We know that we're, we're ridiculously strong. We're ridiculously robust. We're anti-fragile. What we want is we want this, this ecosystem to grow even during adverse environments. And that's exactly what we're doing. So, guys, please, again, participate. You're here. That's great. Increase your level of communication within the, the community. Join our Telegram chat. Participate more on Reddit. If you see that community members have questions, concerns, get out there yourself and be the front line for us to actually make things better. Okay, so quickly to wrap this up, let's focus now to end this on the good stuff. Okay, so what Luca and Alberto talked about in the engineering portion that we kicked this off with is absolutely huge. So keep in mind, guys, our R&D and engineering center is in Milan, Italy. The focal point, the center of of the European outbreak of, of coronavirus, uh, and despite this, so despite a, 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 as adverse of an environment as you can get for our engineering team, these guys have pulled together and are actually ahead of schedule on the most sophisticated elements of what wasn't even considered to be beta. So what what Alberto and Luca mentioned about beta delivery going live, you know, before the end of the month. Uh, it, it sounds like this was the plan all along. I mean, beta, yes, was the plan, but the proving circuit, the cryptographic libraries, these were all things that were done well in advance and were not intended to be part of this beta delivery. So the beta delivery is a significant improvement of what we even thought our own expectations were. And to be able to deliver this in the environment that we're in right now is truly heroic from, from our team. So this is this, the contribution here cannot be understated. I said it right after Alberto mentioned the libraries, but as these are three major cryptographic libraries. One of them is designed truly to be for the entire industry from the, the zero knowledge component of the industry with zero knowledge tools, but also cryptographic tools that can be used for the, by the broader blockchain industry. So this is an enormous contribution of a major cryptographic library designed to be general purpose and designed to be streamlined and useful with significant documentation and tools for other developers outside of the Horizon ecosystem to use. So this, we want to significantly advance the entire blockchain industry. And this is a major contribution by the team. So this is huge. And, you know, the guys deserve a ton of credit for it. 
complementary to this, and this was you know really part of you know Alberto's genius on architecting. Um, he he segregated the library so that you have one that's general purpose and can be used by the entire industry, and it wasn't say verticalized with horizon specific stuff. So what you often see in a lot of these libraries is you have project specific stuff that's directly embedded into a library that many projects use. We're releasing Ginger to be general purpose and is not you know, conflated with a whole bunch of horizon specific stuff. Those were teased out into two other horizon specific libraries for sidechain and for main chain. So you're seeing three major, you know, uh, engineering uh, deliverables being brought to market even sooner than expected here in March. Um, so guys, again, huge congratulations. I cannot overstate the importance of what you guys have done. Uh, and then the, the final piece here is that this major engineering uh, feat or delivery with beta kicks off a, a public development process for us here. So what's being delivered with beta in these cryptographic libraries is now um, public public work and all subsequent development for this, this effort will be done in the public domain. Uh, so again, this is a very important thing for us and we, we want to encourage, so this really is meant to kick off uh, significant community and public contributions into our ecosystem. We're making everything that we've been doing for the last 18 months, say six months on just the, the zero knowledge stuff, 18 months from R and D and architecting on, on the side chain work to beta delivery here, all of this now is going to the public domain. So this is a contribution for the industry, but very significant for Horizon. And we want developers from other ecosystems now to come to our ecosystem and to start contributing positively to what we're doing here. So guys, uh, thank you very much for listening. And I'll stop here. I know we're a little over time and Lucy will open it up to any Minty questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Rob. So the first question is, are you still working with Interfactorial? If so, when do you estimate this to be up and running? So Horizon Labs absolutely is. And, and this is really a Horizon Labs question. So Interfactura is, or, let me just take a step back. We have two parallel you know, development and, and ecosystem building paths here. On the one hand, you have the foundation and this call really is for the foundation. And this and the foundation work is really core infrastructure to build this ecosystem. So things like the open side chain protocols then do. That's, that's on the foundation side. Um, other things like a treasury uh, voting system and resource allocation system, that's on the foundation side. Um, you know, and then on the commercial side, and Horizon Labs is the first of what we hope to be many companies and other organizations or individual developers to start building commercial products with the tools that we're, we're releasing here in Horizon. And uh, Interfactura is, you know, uh, we could say hands down from the Horizon Labs perspective, the most important client. And absolutely still major partner for us. They're our number one design partner for, um, you know, say we, we have on the Horizon Lab side uh, a pipeline of, of partners that we're, we're building side chains for. But all of this work is predicated on the open protocol that we're doing here on the foundation side. And the pipeline that we have is, you know, all the way from small experiments with, um, you know, say a, a gaming partner we have a small experiment with to, to really explore that gaming vertical. And then say on the very other end of this, on the, the large enterprise side, we have a client in Factura that has a third of a country's uh, GDP flowing through their network. And that's a project that we're still working. So in terms of timelines, we can say now we're, we're architecting POCs, proofs of concept. And remember all of this, the core protocol work is still on testnet and is scheduled to be on testnet through the end of the year. And towards the end of the year is when we're looking to wrap up third party audits and actually get things ready for mainnet. And it's at that point that you would really see the commercial stuff going live. So uh, hopefully that answers the question. And uh, what's, what's next, Lucy? Thank you. So the second question is, will a uh, will SDK release within the sidechain beta launch? Yeah, actually, let me punt this back to Alberto, who can go into more detail about what exactly that would entail. Oh, yes, Rob, sure. Um, yes, for sure, um, uh, beta release will include also the SDK and, uh, uh, and also, I mean, as I mentioned before, the SDK will uh, also use the, this Zendu S, uh, the Zendu crypto lib that uh, I just mentioned before. And even the main chain will use the, uh, the other library related to, uh, to the cryptographic stuff I mentioned before. But yes, uh, the, the answer is yes, we have uh, the SDK updated for, for the better release. Oh, that's awesome. 
Um, the last question is, uh, what will be the first sidechain application for Horizon? Such a good question. And this, again, I, I'm going to, to say we have, we have multiple paths. And one thing that I love and is, is such a good idea for the organization, for the ecosystem, is we're going to open up um, a community competition where we're, we're going to see what community developers can come to the table with in terms of fun application, sidechain applications. Uh, we also have the foundation is working on its own you know, core infrastructure stuff. And then we have Horizon Labs that's working on the commercial side. So we'll see of, of these three different tracks that we have, uh, which will go to market first. I mean, honestly, I would love to see the community come up with just really, you know, quick, fun uh, applications that, to see just what can we do with the tech and you know, how can we make some fun opportunities for the community to participate in. Uh, and then on the, you know, the, the other end here, we have the commercial side of uh, what design partners can we work with to solve real business problems. And what I love about this project is, you know, we're very much at our core a community project, but we also have uh, a very, uh, I would say, forward-looking and sophisticated just business outlook that we know that we have to bring, you know, solve real business problems to bring real economic value into this ecosystem from the outside, right? Of course, we're creating a whole bunch of stuff internally and guys, we love you for being just blockchain enthusiasts and horizon enthusiasts for being here, but we have to solve real economic problems and use our technology in that productive way. So we're, we're exploring all of them concurrently and I'm really excited to see which comes to market first. Thank you so much, Rob. All, all, of, all of these are really, really exciting. I'm so super excited. Uh, so thank you, everyone. These are the top three questions for today's Insider. Uh, we will post the rest of the questions. Uh, we have uh, quite a few of them and then answers to them on the Weekly Insider chat channel here on Discord. Thank you again. Back to you, Angie. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a great day. Stay safe. And we keep you posted. Have a great day. Bye-bye.